I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. And if that means you get offended in the process of your freedom, then so be it. Now, today we are going over the six signs. That's right. Six signs of a victimhood mentality. Now, I could have created a list of 150 of these, but I believe that these six basically cover all the bases, right? If you're able to kind of pinpoint these in somebody else, you know, because it's always somebody else, right? It's never you. If you're able to see these in somebody else, that means they indeed have a victim mentality. So let's get into it. Number one, they find a way to make everything everyone else's fault. So this is classic victimhood mentality, right? The ability to make everything in one's own life somebody else's fault. And I remember being that person. I remember being the guy who just believed that everyone who came into my life was problematic. Everybody who came into my life would cause some type of disruption, that everything was everybody else's fault, right? My finances were the, the government's fault or my client's fault. My romantic situation was always my partner's fault. Right? My happiness was everybody's fault or the lack thereof. Therefore, I never took any ownership or any responsibility over my own life outcome. So that's classic case number one for victimhood mentality. Number two, every situation is used as a means to get sympathy and pity. This one is major, right? You will see this clear as day. If you don't see it right now, you're going to start seeing it. You know, situations are used as a way for this individual to get sympathy out of other people. Not as a way to build connection, build rapport, build relationship. No, 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 no. If they're bringing something to you, it's because they want you as a means of sympathy, as a, as a means to extract sympathy from. Because what matters most to them is getting attention because there is some type of deficit in their life, right? There's some type of perceived void that they have and they believe that getting your attention through uh, getting your sympathy and your pity is their solution. So there's that. Number three. They seem to have a problem for every solution. This one right here, like this one needs just a, an extra ear to listen to, right? Or an extra perceptive, perceptive view to really, really deep. They seem to find a problem for every solution. Meaning anytime you bring solutions to them, they will find a problem within it in order for them to remain the victim. They cannot inherently find a solution because that would mean they're not a victim, you see. That's the whole thing about the victim mentality. You have to stay the victim. That's the entire game. That's the way that you get your validation. And so they will continuously poke holes into your uh, solutions in order for them to find a problem so they can remain the, the, the victim. You'll give them a meal plan and they'll say, ah, but it just won't work for me because this, that, and third, right? You'll give them an entire schedule of how they can build their life out in order to get the goal that they want. Ah, you know, I just can't. I'll give them a microphone, a camera, everything that they need, and they'll find some way, some shape, and some form to get themselves back to problem, victim, to, to there seems to be no way for me. I'm stuck. Things never go my way. They have to find themselves back in that place, back to square one, as they used to say back in the day. Number five, they believe everyone else should change. Oh, wait, hold up, hold up. Number four. They don't want solutions. They only want attention. So that one's connected to number three, right? So number three, they want problems for every solution or they'll find a problem in every solution. Number four, they don't want solutions. They want attention. And this ties back into the validation aspect, right? They want your sympathy. They want your pity. They want to extract attention from you because they view attention, any sort of attention as love. They were programmed or conditioned into believing that the only sort of love that existed was when they would get attention, whether it was positive or negative attention, right? Even if people were just, you know, tired of them, but still listening to them, they're like, I'm at least getting some attention. At least somebody's listening. It could be, you know, negative comments in the comment section, but at least they're getting attention. And so they don't want the solution. You come to them thinking practically. You come solution oriented and they come to you victimhood oriented. And those two don't mix like water and oil. Number five, they believe everyone else should change. Everyone else, of course, besides himself. Um, this one was major in my life, right? When I was in this victimhood mentality, I believe that, again, I was this like purified, perfect saint. Because I was also coupling that with people pleasing. I believe that I was inherently right and they were wrong, right? I believe that they were the problem, of course. And so they needed to change their ways. They needed to become somebody else or do something different. I wouldn't call it in a work back then because I didn't know what that was, but they were the ones who needed to do the work and not me. And so I lived this life of perpetually feeling as if, 
you know, everybody else just seems to be problematic. Everybody just seems to, you know, they need a change. Like they need to do something different. Even if I was to discuss a topic with you, a subject of what's going on in my life, I would think to myself, man, you know, th- this person, uh, they really need to find something that will, that will have them see the light. Like that's how I actually view the world. And coupled with religious programming and conditioning, that was a whole different mixed bag. But that one is vital. That one right there. And sometimes it could be so covert, right? It could be so covert. It could seem so so innocent. They could come to you and say, oh, man, you know, this person really needs prayer. Oh, this person right here, we just really need to help them out. But meanwhile, they're gossiping, slandering that individual and using them as a means to remain in that victimhood mentality. Number six. Boom, boom that's six right there. Two flashes of three. Uh, they view all of life through the lens of good and evil. Now, I understand that many of us look at the world and we think to ourselves, they are the good and they're the evil. And though I see the merit in that and I get what we're seeing or what we're perceiving, but I don't really uh, subscribe to that mentality anymore. I don't see it as like, oh, there is a perfect good and a perfect evil simply because that perspective is based in our own perception. Like if you're in war, you go to one side, they see the other side is evil. You go to the other side, they see the other side is evil. So who is really right? Who's wrong? It's up to perception, right? Now, of course, there are acts and things that people do, you know, that are obviously evil deeds if we were to categorize it as such. But we can't just say, oh, this is evil and that's good simply because of where we stand, right? You may go in another culture and what you do is completely evil. You may go into another religious denomination or a fraction and you might a faction and you might find yourself being the evil, right? You go into a religious space when you're not religious, you're seen as a heathen. You go to non-religious spaces when you're the religious, they see you as problematic. Mm. So the victim has to have good and evil, not for the sake of good and evil, but for the sake of keeping themselves in the category of the good. They got to keep themselves as a saint. They got to keep themselves as purified, as, as holy, right? I am the, look at all the good that I do. Look at the way that I move through life. Look at the way that I care. Look at my kindness. Me as, you know, a recovered people pleaser. Look at the way I help everybody. Surely I'm the good one. And everybody else just seems to be problematic. Mm, 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 mm. Now, why does it matter that we extract, extract this uh, victimhood mentality from ourselves, from our consciousness. Well, first and foremost, it keeps you in bondage. It's the very thing that actually keeps you in the problems that you claim to want to remove from your life. Like if you actually want growth, if you actually want this evolution of your experience, if you actually want to experience more of life, you have to strip this thing from you. You have to remove this aspect of your personality or else you'll forever be in the very same cycles that you're currently complaining about. And so that's why it matters to escape victimhood, literally. So let me run through these six one more time and then we're out of here. Number one, they find a way to make everything about uh, everything, everyone else's fault. Number two, every situation is used as a means to get sympathy and pity. Number three, they seem to have a problem for every solution. Number four, they don't want solutions. They only want attention. Number five, they believe everyone else should change besides themselves. And number six, they view all of life through the lens of quote unquote good and evil. There we have it, folks. Now, before we cut out, shameless plug, I'm a very first pub, very first, I don't know what's going on with these words today. Very first published, very first published book. There we go. That's it. Very first published book. Boom, boom, bam, bada, 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 pow. So, My first published book, Doing Me Guilt-Free, Breaking Free from People-Pleasing and Unleashing Your True Personal Power. If you want to say the victimhood, this is going to be it. Like, If you want a Christmas gift or a birthday gift for somebody that you love, get them this. Because they're going to think, oh, doing me guilt-free. That's right. They're going to think it's about you. I know that's right. You're the problem. You're the reason I'm not living guilt-free. They open this and they read it and they realize, ooh, maybe I'm the problem. And then they realize, oh, then that means I'm the solution. So make sure to get yourself and a loved one a copy of one of these. It will be something that will move through life with you. Um, it will do life with you. And I believe it will be a, a welcome part of your family for sure. So I will leave the link for that in the description below as well as pinned in the comments below. Yeah, that sounds about right. Anyway, I appreciate y'all for tapping in. Now I'm about to tap out. Peace.